This next video is going to be covering baseline performance for your running. When we're done with this video, you'll be able to determine what your race pace is, your RPMs for your run, and also develop the confidence to know that no matter what the situation, you'll be able to pass your PST with minimum scores. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is how you're going to develop the confidence for this. For baseline running, that means just that. You're going to run the minimum score and know what that feels like. You're going to have the RPMs, the cadence, to be able to run at that pace so that if you're in boot camp and you're fatigued because you only got four hours sleep, you know, you're up all night folding your underwear and everything they do in boot camp, learning your general orders and all that good stuff, that you'll be able to pass the run when you do have to perform your PST. So it develops a confidence for that. So in order to determine your race pace, what we need to do is calculate out the time for the run. Let's say you're at uh, high school and you have a lap track that one mile is four laps. So for the mile and a half, you got to do six laps. So in order to calculate that out, what you're going to do is take the time of 10 and a half minutes, which is a minimum score for SEAL, and you're going to take your minutes, times that by 60, and then add the seconds. This will give you the total seconds, and then you're going to divide that by the number of laps, which is 6, which equals how many seconds it's going to take to run each lap. So, if you take a 10 and a half minute times 60 gives you 600 seconds plus 30 equals a total amount of seconds of 630 seconds. Now, if you divide that by 6, that will give you 1 minute and 45 seconds for each lap. Now, I have a lot of individuals that have done this baseline running where they're running into the mid to low 9s, and I had to slow them down for this particular drill so that they could see what it's like to run at a minimum. And by doing this, it just shot their confidence through the roof. So again, if we take one minute and 45 seconds per lap, what I have a person do is run several laps with a stopwatch and try to go slow or fast enough to acquire that one minute and 45 second pace. Once they have that, then what they're going to do is determine their RPMs for that particular pace. And in order to develop your RPMs, you're going to take and run your lap. And during that time, you're going to start your stopwatch. And for one minute, you're going to count your revolutions per minute. In other words, if this is your right foot, every time your right foot hits the ground, that's one revolution. So you're going to do that for one minute and calculate on a sheet of paper after each lap how many revolutions per minute you did. You need to average it out. So you do a minimum of three one-minute intervals during your run so that you can take those and calculate out what your race pace would be. Let's say your first one was 72 revolutions per minute. The next time you did it, it was 71. The next time you did it, it was 70. Okay, so when we average that out, you're going to have a revolutions per minute of 71 revolutions per minute. So now as you're running this 1 minute and 45 second lap for 6 laps to achieve your 10 minutes and 30 second minimum score on your PST, you can count your RPMs. Get to know what it feels like. All right, so these guys did four or five laps so that they could acquire that race pace. They're going to use their watch to try to maintain the 145, and they're also going to maintain it by getting to know their RPMs for that pace. Now, after you've acquired that and you have that feel for the minimum score, which is a real confidence builder, what we need to do next is to determine what pace you want to try to run and what score you want to try to get on PST. Let's say you're shooting for a 945. So what you're going to do is you're going to take 9 times 60 for 9 minutes times 60 seconds gives you a total of 540 seconds. Then you add the 45 seconds onto that and that's going to give you 585 seconds. If you divide that by 6 for the number of laps that you're going to run that's going to give you approximately 97 
seconds per lap and when you turn that into minutes and seconds it gives you one minute and 37 seconds that you're going to run per lap. Now if you haven't done that before and you're trying to acquire a faster pace like that then what you're going to have to do is on the track now that you know how many seconds it's going to take you per lap run one lap of course you got to have your stopwatch run the lap and try to achieve that pace if you can achieve that pace stop after the first lap catch your breath recover and then do it multiple times give yourself a minute two minute break whatever it takes to recover from that one lap and then continue running until you get the feel for that now of course it's going to be faster than what you normally run because that's the desired speed that you want to try to acquire so you're not going to be able to run the full six laps like that right from the get-go so you run it one at a time acquire that pace see what it feels like and during that time once you acquire that one minute and 37 seconds or better what you need to do is again count your one minute interval of your rpms figure out now what are my rpms for this speed so once you have your rpms as you're out there training for it you're going to know if you're running too fast or too slow so say you're out there running and get a side cramp okay you get a cramp in your side in order to eliminate side cramps you can exhale and bend over inhale and stand up or twist side to side as you're breathing and running so you don't have to stop but say that does slow you down so you're going less than the rpms required to maintain that pace at least now you know that okay once that cramp goes away i need to pick it back up to the rpms that i need to get the desired speed and now i'm gonna have to increase it just a little bit more so i can actually make up time so all this goes into determining your run so if you're trying to achieve a faster pace break it up on the track into smaller increments so basically you're going to run one lap at a time and then when you get more conditioned for it either decrease the time in between the laps or try to do two laps at a time and then take a break two laps at a time take a break and then you can either add three laps and then four and then five and then the total of six or what you could do is do one lap at a time and then decrease the amount of rest period between each lap so this is one way that you can train to be able to calculate out and hit the time that you need for a run there's no reason not to know how fast you're running so you need to think of this technique as you're running you need to think of your rpms as you're running again this will really build your confidence in the running and i'm going to have more videos